So what happens if you are in a situation like this? Let's assume we have a table with attributes A and B. The first is the A attribute, the second is the B attribute. And now we have a query select B from this table, whatever the name from table, where we select a certain range, let's say a greater equal and a smaller equal 87. So it's very easy to evaluate this condition. We can do that directly on the leaf level here. We run down the tree with 72 and then we say, okay, it's all of this. 72 including 84. That's the stuff we're interested in. However, we have this problem as already explained in my previous video on clustered indexes versus unclustered indexes that we have to follow those row IDs. We have to chase those pointers to the data pages and that may trigger a lot of random IO. And this is kind of unfortunate because from those tuples we are only interested in this B value of each tuple. So we want to have as an output not 72 but we know this tuple qualified so we output A. We know that this tuple qualified so we output D and so forth. And as I said you can only create one clustered index per table. So if you have many many queries like that on different combinations of attributes you can't help all of those queries. You have to make a decision. Still you can do something in this situation. There's a remedy for that and this is supported by many database products. It's called a covering index. So what do we do here? So in addition to the standard key, that is the attribute A I set, and to the row ID, that is the value, the row ID, we also replicate some of the attributes. In this example, the B attribute is replicated, which means if I'm interested in this range, 72 to 87, and I have a query like shown above, select B from table where A whatever condition, there's no need in the covering index to inspect the data pages anymore. That query can directly be evaluated by just looking at the leaf pages of that B tree. That's just fine. Yeah, because I evaluate the condition here and then I just output A. It's A, D, Z, D, Z. It's the result of that query. So, of course, you have to make a wise decision as a database administrator on which attributes to actually cover. Yeah, because if you have a query that's interested in C, yeah, select already if you have something like select B, C, and then the same as before, well, this doesn't help at all. Yeah. You can get B directly from the leaf level, but the C value has to be fetched from the data pages so you don't gain too much as everything is dominated by random IO to the data pages. So it's important to make a good decision here. But the good news is you can create many of those covering indexes in the database system, which means you don't have to replicate the entire tuple for all of these indexes. Keep in mind though that you pay a price as with any method, with any index that uses replication. Now, if you have an insert, update or delete operation, you have to perform a change in two places. So for instance, if you want to change attribute value B for this tuple to become whatever, Z, let's change it to Z. It's not enough to just change it here. You also have to change it here. So two places to update. So be careful in these kind of implementations that the update is performed correctly. Of course, in the database products, if you're just using this, you don't have to worry about that. The system will handle that automatically, but as an implementer, you have to be careful. If you do not have a covering index, you can mimic this by just expanding your key definition. So if we don't have a covering index, we just use an unclustered index, still we can cover the B attribute. How do we do that? Well, just by expanding this, we just expand our key to be a composite key of attribute values A and B. That's what we do here. And here you see it on the leaf level as well. Now the keys get bigger, but they cover the value of B as well. And as this is a dense index, I can answer a query that does something like select B and then blah, 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 and where A, whatever, as before directly on the leaf level as well. A little drawback of the composite index is 
that I enlarge the space that's required here for the pivot element. In the covering index, if you go back, here I only put pivots with respect to the A attributes. Here in the composite index, which is more like a workaround, I have a pivot which is slightly enlarged to also contain the B values. So this might lead to a smaller number of entries here, which might lead eventually to a slightly bigger tree. It's not so severe, depends on the specific attribute types. It may lead to a problem. It depends on the attribute types, especially if B is relatively large, this may lead to a problem. Still, this is a workaround for this kind of situations. Another question that often occurs when working with B trees is, how do we handle duplicates? And here's an example. Of course, the duplicates may only occur if you are using a non-key column as your key for the index. If the index is created on a non-key column, only then you may see duplicates. And that happens here. 11 occurs four times already. So what happens if you insert more tuples that contain this value 11? Well, one obvious way of doing that, one way of handling that, is to create overflow pages. Let's call it option one, overflow pages, or overflow blocks, or overflow blocks if you want. Uh, pages is in memory, as you remember, blocks is on disk. Uh, so here are the options how to handle duplicates. Here we go. Okay, so that's option one. But there are other options. Again, you could avoid the problem of duplicates by the same workaround. That is, you extend your definition of a key. You say, my key is not this one attribute, my key is two attributes. Here I have two attributes. And then what used to be a duplicate with respect to one attribute, 11 is a duplicate with respect to both attributes, it's not a duplicate anymore. So as this is not a duplicate anymore, now, it would only be a duplicate if you had two entries like 11, a and another 11, a. That is a duplicate under a composite key of two keys. But 11, a and 11, g is not a duplicate. So even though you have 11 appearing in the first attribute, you have a different value appearing in the second attribute. So it's not a duplicate. Which means if you define your key like that, you don't have duplicates anymore. Uh, if the condition holds that you never have duplicates like that across the two attributes. So with that workaround again, you could solve the problem of duplicates. However, then you have the same problem here again, that the keys get larger. Yeah? So here the same as above, the pivots get larger. Now they have entries with respect to both attributes. And the same here. Here in the key value entries, the key part now has entries for both of the attributes, which means with a high likelihood you get less entries per leaf here. So that's option two, composite key. Well, there's a third option. And so in this situation, what you could do is you could do something similar to what you do when dealing with leaves in a B tree. Uh, what I mean is the following. So in the standard B tree, let's write it down here. So now a B tree, how we learned it, is something like that. We have a tree. On the lowest level, we have the leaves. And all levels above are nodes. Okay, it can only be, if it's only one level, you don't have any nodes. But if it's more than one level, there's at least one level of nodes. And here you have the pointers to the data pages. Okay, that is the standard B tree. Here it's a D for data page. And those are like two separate structures. The tree is one thing and the data pages is another thing. So what you could also do is, and that's option three, yeah, let's separate that. You say, I enlarge my concept of what a tree means. I say, okay, now I have just a tree and it contains everything. On the lowest level are my data pages. Those are my data pages. And those are my abstract nodes of type D, of type data page. Then on top of that, there's another level of type leaf pages. And on top of that, everything else is the standard nodes. So basically it's like, a, like an extended B tree concept with three different node types. That's option three, and like a, a three node type tree.
and then basically you would run the same split operations on the data pages, the same algorithms you use for leaves and no, that's another option how to handle that. I guess the easiest for most of the cases is to use overflow pages. A workaround if you don't really want to touch the implementation is to use a composite key which has some drawbacks. So to sum up, be aware that if you have an unclustered index and queries like that, you can still do th something. You don't have to convert this into a, a clustered index. You can still use a covering index and you may use multiple covering indexes per table. Be careful to choose those covered attributes wisely to not have too much replication. Replication is a problem with respect to space, but also with respect to updates. If you don't have a covering index, you can mimic it using a composite index by enlarging the keys. This has problems, of course, as the index gets bigger, but you can mimic a covering index like situation. What to do with duplicates? That's important to understand that. The first option is you have these overflow pages as depicted here. The second is you do a composite key, again, a workaround. You can do that on the application level. The third is you actually enlarge your understanding, your concept of what a B tree actually means. So rather than having separated data pages, now you integrate data pages into the tree and then you have like this three level structure. We have one level of D's, one of L's and everything else on top is the standard nodes. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there!